Hello everyone, so in the series of software defined radios and its practical applications, we were discussing power amplifier nonlinearity and uh, the denaturation techniques to uh, overcome its uh, negative effects. So, today we will be discussing pre distortion techniques. We already discussed feed forward technique and feedback techniques, these are basically unlock techniques and we were discussing pre distortion where it contains the elements of feed forward technique as well as feed feedback technique. So, in this kind of techniques, if this is your power amplifier, this pre distortion element is before power amplifier. So, the IMD terms which we were generating in feed forward uh, by using different loop, we get this IMD terms by using a feedback in an offline manner. So, it becomes a combination of feedback technique as well as feed forward technique. So, once we have our data of the uh, device for example, in here you can see TWTA as our power amplifier uh, traveling wave tube amplifier and we can see the A 3 versus A 4 which is the input power versus and uh, output power curve. We can see it is saturating after some time. So, we get this information that what is the output power with respect to input power and then we make a characteristic which is opposite of that one. If we can put an element which has the characteristic which is opposite to that one before this element then the combination of these two give us the linear region. So, again this pre distortion techniques where we are putting an element before power amplifier uh, it has a correction bandwidth of from 10 to 25 dB. So, it is better than feedback techniques and little bit lower than the feed forward technique but it has relative co uh, cost because it is not using that many component which feed forward techniques for using and its character correction bandwidth is better than the feedback techniques. Now, because our requirement for the bandwidth is increasing, so now we have to have a different look again that which of the distortion techniques whether it is analog, digital, the hybrid will be better. So, let us have a look uh, at these techniques one by one. So, let us start with digital pre distortion technique and this is the backbone of the software defined radio. In software defined radio we can define our parameter uh, parameters in the software in the DSP of the system. So, that is why digital pre distortion is something uh, we wish to discuss in detail. So, here you can see the power amplifier is here we apply our signal which is X n and we have one element which is in the digital domain and initially it has gain 1. So, the output of this digital domain is u n. So, when there is nothing where when there is no coefficient updation here in that case x n is equal to u n. So, basically this x n is being applied to power amplifier. The power amplifier output is captured here and then because p output will have some gain we remove that gain by dividing it by small signal gain. So, how if it look? So, if it is p in versus gain which we also call AMM characteristic we have discussed it before and this gain small signal gain is let us say uh, 40 dB and after some time it is starts getting saturated. So, with respect to 40 dB it is getting saturated and it has 2 dB compression. So, what will be the power of this point? It will be 38 dB. So, this G is this gain, this small signal gain when it is flat. When we divide our signal by this small signal gain, then what will ha what happens? Our output signal will look like uh, it is 40 dBm. So, let us say it will be 0 dB because we have divided with respect to 40 in uh, voltage domain. So, in dB domain we are basically subtracting this. So, around 0 dB and we can see still 2 dB compression which will be which will be giving us this point. So, the output after this P A after 1 upon g will be having 0 dB gain at small signal at 
saturation it will be showing minus 1 dB K. Now, using our Yn and Un, we update our coefficient and we make a non-linear model. So, that that non-linear model will make these IMD terms which are opposite to that of the IMD terms of the power amplifier and once we get this information, we update our K alpha which is our p distorter element. So, for first iteration when there is nothing only ones are there u n is equal to x n, but when we update these equations of our uh, uh, pre distorter then this u n will be different from x n and u n will be some kind of non-linear function as we have earlier shown that it will be non-linear, but this, this will be non-linear in the opposite sense of that of power amplifier. So, basically what we are trying to do here to get the inverse modeling here, our function of P A. So, if f is the modeling function which is representing our P A nonlinearity after remo removing the gain, let us say y was given by f x upon g because we want to model only the nonlinearity effect, we can remove the gain and then we can try to model the nonlinearity. Now, this is the effect, this is the function of the P A. So, P A model we can call it. The inverse function d p d output is actually f inverse function which is applied on y. So, that the whole system because y is actually f x upon g. So, digital distortion output is f inverse y and system output will be actually f inverse and y is actually f x upon y uh, x upon g. So, it should be able to give us the actual signal and of course, because we have removed this g we can again multiply it back you will get uh, your actual signal. So, this effect of g we can remove so that we it, it is conversant with this we are assuming that they are both at the same power level after removing the g and if we assume that then our system output is actually x and this is what we wanted. We wanted our system to have an x and we wanted our output to have g x without any distortion. So, keeping this in mind our x in uh, and uh, y if you want to do the inverse modeling we do the modeling in opposite way it means it means we try to model this relation and because of that whatever function we get it is our inverse model or dpd model so again you can see we require some kind of model here instead of writing f inverse i can give it a new name i can say that i want to find a function let's say gamma function of y and this will be the dpd model so by capture data we will set all the output at one side and keep all the input we have captured at one side and we try to find this model. Once we find this model we will actually apply original x here. So, x d p d will be actually gamma of x original. So, for finding the model we put x is equal to gamma y and for applying then we put original x instead of y and the x dpd which we will get here will be actually pre distorted version which will when passed to power amplifier will give you linear system. How can we implement such a system in the real life one example I am showing here. 
So this is one example how proof of concept in the laboratories are done. You can see here we are using a signal generator which is from Agilent, it is called Keysight now. So this signal generator, signal generator, what does signal generator do? First of all, we choose a set of data, we load the data in our personal computer using uh, MATLAB. Now when you have decided that X in from MATLAB, within MATLAB, generate bits. modulate in particular format, it can be QAM, PPSK, QPSK and so on. So, modulation is done there. Once you have modulated our, your signal, then you do the pulse shaping. If you want to apply OFDM, you can apply after this symbol, once you have uh, decided your symbols, then you can apply OFDM if you want to and then you do the pulse shaping, then you have your signal in the base band, that signal which is in the form of I plus JQ, pulse shaped diagram which is continuous in nature and not in pulse uh, shaped signal, this is of a particular length, let us say n equal to 10,000 data. is loaded into this signal generator. Now this data is generated by us, so we have the information of this data and once you have loaded into the signal generator, what this signal generator do? It takes a format where you can give it the txt file of i and j columns or it can accept the data which is of the this complex format i plus jq and that data can be read by this instrument. Once this instrument read this data, it sends this data, it saves this data in its RAM or memory within this uh, signal generator and after that it keeps repeating this data again and again. So, for one, it, once it will read uh, from 1 to 10,000 data, after that again from 1 to 10,000 and so on, it will keep rep repeating that data again and again. That data is being sent to the DAC uh, which is inside this signal generator. That DAC will convert it into a log domain. You will have knobs in this uh, kind of instrument which in which you can choose the carrier frequency. So, up conversion to the carrier frequency using mixer is, uh, is already happening inside it and the RF you can get from the output from this signal generator. Now, this RF is applied to the power amplifier which is working in that range. So, this is the power amplifier lineup uh, which is a very high power amplifier, Dorothy power amplifier. Now, its RF output is uh, taken into the spectrum analyzer. Again, the spectrum analyzer will have some range. Uh, for example, it can take only 20 dBm power. That is why we are showing a attenuator here. This attenuator we apply to keep the power range low enough to keep our uh, spectrum analyzer. Um, uh, safe. So, spectrum analyzer shows us the spectrum. If it is vector spectrum analyzer, then we can also get I and Q data from within this analyzer. So, what this analyzer does? Uh, this analyzer does the down conversion to baseband frequency and then uh, it does analog to digital conversion and after that we are able to get our data. So, vector spectrum analyzer which will again provide you i plus j q data, data at the p output. Now, you have originally provided me 10,000 data, so it keeps repeating. So, suppose you capture 20,000 data from this uh, vector spectrum analyzer, it means you have received this 10,000 data two times because this is what you have loaded into generator. 
so it is basically a kind of training sequence you are sending and you are capturing outside so what do we do after that for example with the respect to time this is the amplitude of signal uh, um, amplitude of v t and this is how it looks like so basically the same data which you have sent if you have captured for the twice of the previous uh, time you will have 20000 data but it has the same information twice so you only need to capture 10000 data at, at a time okay so originally let's say this was the signal sent i am again drawing the amplitude only it was the sent signal and it is the received signal you know need only 10000 data suppose you have captured 20000 data you cut this data anywhere so that it contains only 10000 data right if you cut it like this what does it mean you are capturing your data you are starting to read your data here but uh, you will notice that after some time it is again showing the data which was there before which we are not actually capturing but it is repeating so you are not losing any data what is the main thing here our data is starting from here if i want to compare this data with this data we will have a problem of the time delay because starting is starting from here so this is the delay to remove the confusion let's say this is our captured data of the 10000 data window at the vsa and this is the time lag but in real life because the system is continuously running and you will suddenly start capturing your data so you don't know at which instant it will start capturing so this delay will be there and you will not be knowing it so we require time delay correction because whenever you want to characterize any data then you should know one to one mapping of that data you should know the input and uh, output relation and that cannot happen if this, this delay is there otherwise for this data you will be reading this data for this next data you will be reading this data which is a wrong information so how can we do that we know that power amplifier characteristic if we plot it with respect to p in how does it look it look linear for a long time and after that it saturates so most of the time the data is in the linear region only for smaller time it will have the effect of distortion there so relying on this fact we do the cross correlation bit of the input signal and the output signal and whenever we get the peak of our signal that point we will know that it is our uh, delayed point and then we adjust our output data and we will put all this data after this and this data and this data will be actually time aligned so we do the cross correlation to uh, know this prime delay and compensate for that so this is what we are showing here that this both of the vector signal generator and vector spectrumizer they are connected to our digital signal processing unit which is laptop in this case as we are showing here they are connected using gpib here once we have our data uh, in the input in the form of i plus jq which was this data which we sent and we created in the matlab so we already have it and this i plus jq which we captured from the vsa from the output of the power amplifier they contain the information of the nonlinearity so after time delay removal we have done the compensation now we can actually start to see the relation between these two so again after compensation this point is shifted to this point right so this is how we will read it and now this is the input signal to the power amplifier and this is the output signal from amplifier and digital domain we have in digital domain we have information of both of these uh, values so let's remove this and now concentrate only on 
input and output values. So, from eyes they have some similarity in their shape, but because system also have nonlinearity, so you will see it is not exactly same, it will have some similarity in the eyes, but somewhere some amplitude will not match. So, when it is input and output and we do the modeling and let us say it is x and let us say it is y, y is equal to f x is called p a modeling because it will give you the relation between p a input and output. So, if you are able to model this function then this models can be used in MATLAB or any other processor. We had seen the parametric model earlier in the previous lectures and they are doing the same thing they are giving us the p a model, but we were discussing digital pre distortion and digital pre distortion we do the digital pre distortion modeling and it actually is let us call gamma y. So, this is this function only this y is actually uh, y output divided by gain, gain is removed because we want to get the nullity effect, but not the gain after removing the gain. So, this modeling is called DPD modeling, it is also called inverse modeling because it is kind of uh, inverse of the original relation. So, similar to the modeling same models can be applied here by exchanging the input and output. So, now output uh, so input of the input of P a it becomes output and the output divided by G it becomes it becomes your input that is why it is called inverse modeling. Once you get your gamma then you know your model. So, how do you apply your DPD? Once you know your gamma then you say DPD model is known and you again apply your actual input which is x original x is applied to this comma and this y dpd comes into picture which is then again loaded to the uh, signal generator using matlab so please remember here that your x and y they all are complex quantities here so, this y dpt will again have the stream of i plus j q data. This data which is generated inside uh, MATLAB is loaded into this vector signal generator like we have loaded our original x signal here and then uh, again sent to power amplifier and then we can observe the spectrum at the receiver here. So, this is the process of doing the pre distortion. As you can see the application of this distortion is happening inside MATLAB in this case or in our DSP that is why it is called digital pre distortion and uh, uh, once we do this uh, then we have to take care of our A to D and uh, D to A requirement which we did not have to look into when we were dealing with the feed forward and the feedback system because it is DSP system here. So, let us have uh, look at some of the models which we can use for this modeling. Again I will mention all of these models can be used for modeling as well as uh, inverse or DPD modeling only difference is that in one of the cases which is modeling case we are modeling this kind of characteristics and for inverse modeling. we are modeling this kind of characteristics both of them are nonlinear nature, but they are different kind of nonlinearity. So, it is for uh, forward modeling or PA modeling or PA modeling and this is for this is for DPD or inverse modeling. So, now let us have a look at uh, these models and uh, 
first of all let us look at uh, very established models in the literature for example Winder model or the Hempstein model this model assume that nonlinearity uh, can be used by using lookup table we uh, we have used uh, lookup table earlier also so what is lookup table whenever you have your data p in versus gain and phase if you have your input i plus jq and output i plus jq in and out of course we can easily get this information p in can be uh, calculated from here so p in will be absolute of v whole square divided by 100 if you want to convert into db then do the 10 log 10 of this plus 30 and you can calculate those values and put here respective gain you can calculate by comparing this with respect to this v2 upon v1 and then you can convert into db and gain will, will be here similarly phase 10 inverse q upon i gives you phase so phase of output minus phase of input you can put in here so these are LUT uh, uh, lookup table methods you can just see any particular value and see the gain and phase similarly if I want to do the mapping with, uh, this respect to this then my phase will be not output by uh, minus input it will be input phase minus output phase and again gain will be also opposite it will be input divided by output and that will be LUT for the inverse model so LUT form is something which gives us the modeling performance so there are different models and in the next lecture we will continue this discussion with different kind of models so keeping this in mind these all models can be used here we will come back and discuss this uh, setup again with low cost setup uh, so that it can be used easily in the laboratory environment thank you